Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 44, and we're on part two of querying a database. And today we're actually going to continue with our CRUD operations, and we'll make a few modifications just to make the code a little bit more readable. So let's go right to Eclipse. So just to review, last time in Eclipse, we actually created this get all interface method, and what that did actually returned all the values in our database. Let's go ahead and run that again just to remind you where we're at. So the bottom here, we declare the database instance, give it the my uh, database handler, and then we run that database handler. So let's run the code. And the query returns a full record set of our database. And you'll notice there's a few more items in our database. We start with the garden, and then we have the fall of man, and we added the flood and the tower of Babel. So it's getting kind of interesting here, as far as database is concerned. Uh, so let's go back and just start working with the database. We want to actually now not just call everything in the database, but we actually want to call a particular item, an ID, and so we're going to actually comment this out. And the next thing we're going to do is actually call a particular item by ID. We're going to call the second ID item. Now how do we do that in code? So let's go back up and take a look at that. And so we're going to get an item by ID, and what we're doing differently here is we're actually putting something into the method. So in order to do that, we actually actually bind that uh, parameter to our prepared statement. But let's do a little work with the prepared statement. It's actually kind of hard to read. I have to open it up a little bit for you to see it all. And here basically is our connection, and here's our SQL statement. We're actually going to just shorten that a little bit. I'm going to create a new variable, call it query. And I'm going to let that equal to my SQL statement. So I'm going to pull that out, so just make it a little more human readable. Put it right here. And we'll just put our query name of where that SQL statement was. No problem, you can do that. And now it's a little bit more readable. And we say that our error should go away. What seems to be the issue here? I seem to have another error. Oh, I forgot my uh, semicolon. There we go. And just a few points here. First of all, SQL is not case sensitive, so I could have typed this as a capital where wouldn't make a difference. And uh, SQL also is not space sensitive, so I can actually could just return these and actually just make this a little bit more readable if I want to do like that. This line is kind of short, so I'm not going to worry about that, so we'll just leave it like this. And now what we're going to do, we're going to prepare our SQL statement and pretty much uh, prepare the connection and the statement itself. And then we're going to actually bind uh, the ID that we're passing in through the method to our particular prepared statement. And it's kind of funny, when you first see this command, it looks kind of weird, and here it is right here, mysql bind param, here's the statement, and here's this weird little parameter here, and here's the item that you're passing in. What this parameter is, it's kind of strict typing, it's telling you what the parameter is that you're passing in. So let's go back and take a look at the original statement, and once again, we have this, we're passing in this ID, we have this where with a question mark, and what we're going to do is bind to that question mark the uh, particular parameter item ID. And so we're going to come along here, and we actually have four possible parameters that we can strict type with. I stands for corresponding variable is an integer. D is a double. Uh, S is a string. And B corresponds to a variable that is a blob and will be sent in packets. So in this particular case, we're passing in two. We want to pull out the index two. So this particular item is an I, which means it's an integer. And then we bind that to the variable that we're passing in. So that's how simple that parameter is. We'll throw again once again, see if we get an error. We'll execute the SQL statement as we did before, check for error again. And then we'll bind those results, uh, as we did in the previous example. And then we'll fetch all possible rows. Well, it could be more than one, possibly, you know, with the same ID, or whatever you want to actually bind to. And with that done, we'll return the statement to see if it works. So let's run the method. So come down here and let's remind you what we're doing. So let me remind you what we're doing. We're actually preparing the statement, and then we're actually going to pass in a 2 into that my item ID and actually select the second element. So let's go ahead and run this particular uh, code. And when you do, you see we get an ID of 2, the fall of man. So it worked perfectly. And you can come along here and actually change the parameter that you're inputting. So let's change this to 3, for example. Or well, let's try 4. And that should be the Tower of Babel. Let's see if that's what we get. 
And when you run that, you get the fourth ID and you get the Tower of Babel. Now you could have passed in any parameter using the where method and actually pulled out whatever parameter from that particular uh, row, from that particular record set that you wanted, but we're actually doing fine with the ID right now. Okay, so that's one way just to pick out a particular ID, a particular row from your uh, database. Let's move on. So in our next method in the interface database code, we're actually going to create a row. And once again, you need to input a parameter. And when you input a parameter, you need to bind it. So that's what that binding is all about, basically bind parameter. But what we're going to do is not input a single value like we did in the past, but we're actually going to input an array. And we'll bind to the items of that array. Now, just real quick, I've actually, uh, once again, pulled out the SQL from the uh, prepare statement and created my own line. And I put some spaces in here, or some returns. And once again, uh, SQL statements are not sensitive to returns or spaces, so it actually treats it as one statement. So it's actually more human readable here. And what I do is I actually have the parameters of my database, ID, title, param1, param2, param3. And I have all these question marks in here, values with question marks. Well, that's kind of strange. But once again, after I... Uh, do the prepare statement, then I have to bind my uh, array to those question marks. And so in the next uh, statement, after I've done my uh, prepare statement and I've checked for errors, I'm going to do my bind parameter. And I take that statement and I put it right here in the uh, bind parameter. And the first one is going to be an integer, the second one is going to be a string, and the last three are going to be integers. Now for the last three parameters, this will change, but for now we'll just go ahead and go with what we have. And then I'm just going to bind that to the items in my array, item 0, item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4. So now I have the ability essentially to create an item array, uh, bring it into the create interface, and create a place in my database. Now once that's executed, right here, then I'm going to insert a uh, ID. Then I'm going to do an auto ID and I'm going to free the statement and I'm going to close it. Now just real quick here, you can insert specifically by ID and we're actually doing that. We actually have this ID number right here. We're going to specifically insert by ID. But you can also auto insert because what will happen with the database, if you start inserting values and you don't tell it what uh, the ID number is, it'll just automatically increment for you. And so in this particular case, in the next statement, we're going to auto insert. And so we only have four statements. We don't put in the initial ID. We just let the database auto increment for us. So I just want to make that point for you. So these first two statements will be pretty much the same. The first one, we're actually going to insert by ID. But the second statement, we're actually going to auto increment right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we prepare this statement. So what we're going to do now is prepare our array that's going to go into our create interface method. And we'll just start off by going, okay, my item array. And we'll put a 5 because that's the fifth ID number and Pangea 010. So if you know the story, uh, basically there was the flood and then the Tower of Babel and then Pangea began to break apart. And that's actually documented in the biblical text. And then we're going to basically just stick that array into the create interface method and run it. So let's see what happens. And indeed, we see that we're getting back the uh, new number that's in the database. We actually don't see the value uh, Pangea, so we'll actually go back and run the initial method and actually uh, get back all the values in the database. So I'm going to comment this method out. No need for that now. And let's just run the initial method and see if we indeed have that value in the database. We're just going to call everything in the database table and take a look at it. And indeed, you can see that uh, in your very last item, you got item 5, Pangea, and you have these parameters here, which we will be changing in the future. So you did actually insert a row into the database. Now you can also auto-increment. So let's go ahead and just auto-increment this uh, by, uh, I'm going to once again comment this out. What I want to do is basically highlight this and hold down my alt control and just go down one. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to remove this value from the array. So I'm only going to send four values to the array, and so it's going to auto-increment automatically for me. Let's go ahead and do this. And I believe the value that we're working with, I'm going to copy this as well so we don't lose this code. Uh, the method is called create interface auto, and that will auto-increment for me. Now let's see, what happened after Pangea? Well, after Pangea, of course, there were a number of sons being born which had different talents, but we'll skip all the way up to the famous biblical character Abraham. And let's go ahead and see the auto increments for us. We'll go ahead and save this, and let's run it. And it says we have six values. Let's go ahead and print everything out and see if we got Abraham in there. So we'll go ahead and comment this out, and we're going to print out all every, and we'll print out all the information that's in our database by running the get all interface. 
And we do, we're going to see now we have a sixth item, and that's Abram. So in this particular tutorial, we actually covered three methods. We actually were able to grab data by ID. We learned to add data by ID. And we learned to add data by auto-incrementing. And we, and we looked at the important command, uh, MySQL bind param. Now look at this particular example. I just want to bring this to your attention. That when I left off that initial ID, I have to drop that I, and it was S I I I, and that were my that was my parameter base. Now if I change the uh, type of parameter that I'm bringing in here, which I will, I need to change the I to whatever type of parameter it is. And we're going to handle that in an upcoming video, and uh, we'll try to finish up this uh, tour through MySQL LI commands, and we'll start getting to some more interesting things. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.